Hey, Janice. Hi, Anthony. Today, we're going to try to cover how to get your inheritance faster. <laughs> I feel like Question. one of those commercials. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, legitimately, heirs often want to know, hey, is there any way we can get our inheritance faster? Because they, you know, as we've talked about, um, probate does take a long time yes. uh, for various reasons. And lately, it's been taking even longer because of various or IRS delays, which has been making getting tax clearance, even, believe it or not, even slower. <laughs> yes. So here are our, what we believe are um, some of the available options, not the best, because one of them is we don't recommend for, right. <laughs> you know, how to help out an ear who's suffering from a cash crunch. Okay. All right. So the first is, is to get out the expense reimbursements as soon as possible. Uh, some examples of expense reimbursements is heirs who paid for the funeral bill or the court or the court fees or maybe an attorney's retainer up front or who kicked in for the clean out crew, moving costs, co-op, uh, what do you call it, co-op fees, uh, mortgage payments, any repairs to property. There's so many things that heirs may have paid for that they are entitled to be reimbursed, reimbursed from the estate. Absolutely. Now you might be already thinking, well, that's money. That's my money. Like that's not even my inheritance. Like that's money I paid or I paid out of pocket. I should be getting that back fast. Yeah, that's true. Um, you're just getting repaid. Um, but if it, if the, if your situation error is that you just need liquidity now, this can come out quickly. There's like very little debate about whether or not. Well, most of these, not all of them. Some of but them like property the repairs bill. might be dispute, but right. the funeral bill will pay you back. You know, the estate can pay you back asap. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, court and you know court fees. There's there's those are unequivocal. So those can be reimbursed very quickly once the estate has funds. So if you just need a couple of I don't want you know I don't want to put a number on it, but a couple thousand bucks to 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 get you through a tough spot. Um, this could be a good way to again, it's your money <laughs> that you right, already paid right. out, but it's a good way to to get cash back in your pockets. Yeah, it, and some might have actually used. Let's say they had a savings account and they just liquidated that to yeah. be, to pay the funeral bill and now their their little nest egg is gone and their backup so this would actually replenish that right i think that i think would... we had somebody who used their vacation fund to right, pay something right. and they just wanted to go on vacation which is totally legitimate and they didn't Absolutely. want to wait like a year so yeah right, that right. and again there's there's no uh, we'll talk about the accounting and other things coming up there's no hold ups with expense reimbursements so again for most of them not all and we can get those out very quickly so Another alternative is to do an intermediate accounting. Okay, so we've talked about in the past how um, to close a probate estate. We talked about that in 294. Um, one of the main steps is to do an accounting, which is the full books and ledgers and transactions of the executor's tenure. And you're, you're, you're telling everyone, here, here's what I collected, here's what I spent, here's every dollar in and out. <laughs> every do penny, you agree? This way and that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The thing is, that's usually done at the very end because it's a time-consuming and costly process. I mean, I don't know if you can imagine. It's, it's, it's actually hard <laughs> to, to oh, track down yes. every transaction over months and years. Um, I mean, Everything. we are keeping Even, track as we go along. But sometimes yes. you're like, where does this 50 bucks come from? You know, things like that. Right. You have like the, the $3.04 of interest every month. That and, and just to be clear, it's usually yeah. bigger than that. Otherwise, you know, oh, we sure. wouldn't hold things up. But it, it, is, it is harder than you would think to keep everything balanced. Absolutely. And like you said, we're accounting for every dollar, every dollar in and every dollar out. So what does that have to do with an intermediate accounting? So that's what, so the, the accounting I just described is what we do at the end of the whole estate, the, the months or years later that you're trying not to wait that long. An intermediate accounting is when you do that again <laughs> right. um, in the middle of the, of the whole probate process so that you can justify uh, or you can get, you know, approved to pay out let's say a third or even half of what the funds are to the, to the heirs. Okay. That sounds pretty good, right? Oh, I'll take a third. Sure. Okay. The problem with that is that you're really duplicating work that, um, that you're going to end up doing all over again at the end of the estate. Like you're doing the full accounting, at least up to that point, um, to, 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 to allow, uh, this, this intermediate payment that may totally be worth it. I don't, I, you know, it's, it's hard for us to understand what your, um, cash crunch situation is but if there are other heirs who don't want to make that du duplicative payment you know they might argue well then you should pay for the cost the, the right. person who's pushing for the money to come out should pay for the cost of the accounting out of his or her share it can lead to disputes um and just a lot of people like once they hear that it's they're, they're paying their lawyer twice they just don't like that right. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's hard enough to pay the first time. Yeah. Now you've got to do it twice. <laughs> that, which that I totally understand. <laughs> but I'm just letting you know, letting everyone know that this is an option. We let our heirs know this is an option. I don't think we've we've only had one one estate in the past couple of years take it because most people just chafe at the idea of paying the lawyers and accountants twice. <laughs> right, because immediately it sounds like such a great idea. And yeah. then as soon as you explain, well, you're going to pay us twice. <gasps> oh, nope, nope. <laughs> yeah. And I, I really don't blame them. That's why I make clear to uh, explain it so they, they don't, you know, realize after the fact what's happened. They, they know up front, like, oh, correct, I, don't, correct. I don't want to do that, you know? Okay. So the last option, and I hesitate to even call it an option because I, I really strongly discourage this from anyone, is the inheritance <laughs> advanced loan. This is the payday loan. This is the loan shark. This is, uh, that's, that's a lot. Not, not loan shark, but it's just borderline usurious um, uh, uh, option, I guess you'd call really it. Really taking advantage loan. Yeah. Of- this is a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're basically paying sometimes upwards of 100% interest. To, to get some money now. So for example, if you if if your share of the estate's going to be $50,000 and you need 10,000 now, right? For whatever reason, no judgments. You go to these companies, they'll give you 10,000 now. I mean, there's paperwork and this and that, but they they can do they are they're okay, I'll give them that. They're relatively quick. But what happens is at the end of the estate when the executor is supposed to pay you 50, mm-hmm. they pay you 30. Right. <laughs> because for the 10 that you borrowed, you owe the the lending company twenty thousand dollars, basically double. Not those exact numbers, but I'm just ballparking. I mean, it's and we've seen very pretty similar. close. Yeah, we have. So, I mean, I know a lot of folks are thinking, "Oh gosh, I, I I hesitate to even bring this up because some folks will be like, i 'I'll take that deal.' But yeah, okay, look. So it exists in the in the in the most narrowest of circumstances. It may be worth it for you. Um, but please explore the expense reimbursements and the intermediate accounting at least before um, before you go that route. And to, you know, and talk to your executor or your attorney and make sure that you've exhausted all other options before you go to inheritance advance. Last, last, last case yeah. scenario. And correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. but it, let's say you do take this loan from the company that we don't really want to happen. And something happens with the estate. Let's say there's a big, huge tax, something that has to be paid. You still have to pay that loan back. That is actually up for debate. Uh, is it okay? at the worst you're stuck in some litigation and headaches involved with that yeah. more money in litigation yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah 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 of litigation. course litigation yeah interesting well uh, you know st- like you said maybe a very last case scenario but yes. um I, I always recommend Anthony's book how probate works so you can see and learn how this is going to take definitely a little bit of time yeah so hopefully by you know understanding the process you can sort of plan and have proper expectations for the see a lot of um even attorneys out there will sort of promise oh yeah in a couple of months i'll have you your money but it doesn't work out that way more often no. than not no so, no so if you have the proper expectations or the realistic expectations some might even say pessimistic <laughs> expectations <laughs> up front then um at least you won't be expecting and you know sort of oh no i was really counting on that that check you know right so and, and i know you're really good at that like you will tell somebody in the beginning, like, this is not going to be done in a month yeah. or a year. This is a long process. We're very vocal about that. Yeah. All right. I mean, it, it probably, um, we probably, uh, we have clients who go to other more, um, optimistic attorneys, but that's, you know, that's, that's our place in the, in this, in the, in the ecosphere. I don't want to overpromise. I, I tend to underpromise and overdeliver. I try to at least. Yeah. That would, that would be better. If you told me it was going to, something was going to take two years and it took a year and a half, I'm going to be very happy. Exactly. But if you told me it was going to take a year and now we're on two, I'm not going to be so happy. <laughs> right. Cool. All right. So that covers that. Uh, thanks, Janice, as always. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And uh, yeah, we hope you found this helpful. Take care.